<laughs> if you ask Le'Veon Bell, well, he would prefer to stay right where he is in Pittsburgh. The Steelers' leading rusher, who recently earned the team's MVP honors, is set to become a free agent in 2017. But he says he wants to stay a Steeler. And that quote, we are going to try to do whatever it takes to make that happen. We, meaning him and his agent. Uh, would you give Bell a long-term deal, Stink? I would, yes. Okay. I, I mean, I, the guy is phenomenal. And his ability, you know, his patience, his vision, the way he sets up runs. There are guys in this league that don't seem to get hit. There are those running backs that regardless of what you do, and he'll punish you too. I mean, he's a physical guy, but he is the he is the guy that's the punisher. He's not the punishee. You know what I'm saying? And there are certain running backs that take a beating that you're like, that dude does not have a long shelf life because that guy gets hit a lot. And Le'Veon Bell is a different cat. I've always said this. The, the hits that hurt are the ones where you get hit. When you're the guy delivering the contact, like it's a hot knife through butter. And when, some, when you get a guy that doesn't, is not necessarily ready for you and you, you deliver the, the main contact, it doesn't hurt you. It's when all of a sudden you throw a pick and you're going to chase it and, you know, Bruce Smith hits you in the chin and snot shoots up both your nose <laughs> and nostrils as you, you know, those are the ones that hurt. Where you're laying on the ground going, oh, my God, that's going to leave a mark. That right? does not sound like anything no, ever so those are, so, But he's one of those guys that, to me, I know he's been injured, you know, with the knee injury, but he's not one from a shelf life standpoint that I believe is at the end. I believe he's in the prime, and so I would give him a long-term deal and his ability to receive the ball, to play almost wide receiver, his route running ability, the guy is special. He's just fun to watch, he's special, and uh, I would love to see them keep him in that fold with Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown, what they've got going on. I'll tell you somebody else, I'll tell who they're, they're, they're wrong, is myself from a year ago. So a year ago I would have said, you just simply don't give a running back this kind of money. The lessons have been learned, they get hurt, right. they wear out. You don't give running backs this kind of money. Here's what we should learn about the market. Whatever the market's doing, do the opposite, because that's where the opportunity lies. A year ago, everybody thought you could plug any running back into any system, and they were almost disposable. Have two or three, run them in and out. Ezekiel Elliott's changed the game. Running backs, Cowboys got him with the fourth pick, arguably the best player in the draft that got him with the fourth pick, and now he's showing the value of a running back. Le'Veon Bell's 24 years old. You give him the money, the, run, the, the running back market is showing us how important this particular position is. By the way, you look at the top running backs. At this point, it's guys like Shady McCoy. It's guys like DeMarco Murray. These guys have gotten paid. Right. They're proving their worth. While the rest of the world has said running backs no longer demand that kind of market, they're showing us if you're the kind of talent Le'Veon Bell is, you right. give it to him. Here, here's why I disagree with both of you, and I'm looking you in the eye. All right. Uh, and I've always looked at you. Yes. <laughs> Start with okay. 13 games, 16 games. Six games. Mm -hmm. This year, 13 games. He wasn't hurt this year. Right. Why did he miss those three games? Well, he, he has other issues than just being able to play football at a very, very high level. He is one of those rare quarter, uh, running backs, I will agree, that started very, very well. Adrian Peterson got a really big contract because he was really, really good coming out of college. Zeke's going to be the same way. I would give him a long-term deal, just not right now. I need to see that he can play and stay in the locker room, stay in the locker room for an entire season before I'm going to give him whatever, 12 million a year, I think is, is, is what the going rate is, 12, 13, for five or six years, and then guarantee 35 million of that. Because what's going to happen two or three years down the road, I know that you don't get paid when you're suspended, but I also want my guy on the field because he is a game changer. You're both right about that, but I would not give it to him right now. But it also, you dance into the world of an unhappy player because they hate the franchise tag, especially when you're running back and you can have that serious injury. I always I always look at when you're negotiating these things, they're, they're any five, six-year deal is really a two- to three-year deal anyhow, and it essentially voids. You put so much back-end money on it that at that point, you know, you're going to be able to eat that salary cap space for two or three years, and then you're going to figure out where you go from there. Um, he's one of those guys that's transcendent in that he makes everybody around him that much better. The great ones make up for a multitude of sins. And the Dallas Cowboys offensive line is tremendous, but Zeke Elliott makes them better because he makes up for a multitude of sins. That's what Le'Veon Bell does. He takes a Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line that has actually played really well, especially down the stretch, but he makes them that much better. It makes them that much more effective. So 
I would look at that and say that is a small price to pay. And it is better in this day and age to offer it early and get that quote unquote hometown discount. Like the teams that let it hit free agency, those are the teams that make mistakes. The teams that lock you up early, give you what you want, but maybe save a little bit for themselves as well. That's that to me is just smart management. That is smart management of your football team, and that's a guy that you need to get that done with. You know what else is smart? Us bringing you back on the show. Will you hang out? Really? Is he coming back? Yeah. Oh, come back? absolutely, I will. All right, Stan. Thank you. Uh, we want you to lead the debate for Will and Coach. So send in your best questions. You ask them about sports, pop culture, whatever. Love advice, maybe using the hashtag #FTFanTake, and these guys will answer them a little later in the show. Why are you laughing? Wow. Well, love advice would be great. Yes, yeah, for you. I would love to hear that actually. The Patriots are looking or potentially looking to shop their talented backup quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. He's only started two games in his three-year NFL career, but has stepped up at times when Tom Brady was out. According to our Adam Schefter, in his opinion, a trade would start with a first and fourth round pick in exchange for the former second rounder. Joining us at the table, Stink, Mark Schlera. So, Stink, uh, Jimmy G, is he worth that, a first and a fourth round pick? Absolutely. I mean, if that's what the market bears, if Sam Bradford is worth the first and a fourth round pick, then Jimmy Garoppolo certainly point. is worth a first and fourth round pick. The other thing is, I don't even know that that will get him. You think about where he is right now and where we are at the quarterback position in general in this league. I mean, you think about it. We have, there is a dearth. You know, people say it's a quarterback driven league. No, it's a quarterback deprived league. There's only a, there's only a handful of them that can play, right? So if you feel like Jimmy Garoppolo, based on what you've seen, and I know it's a very small sample size, but if you, if you look at that sample size and say this kid just cut people up when he had the opportunity to do that. Now, you can put the injury stuff in there, you can do all those things, and you can wait it for yourself. But if you look at the draft coming out, and you look at the lack of success that many have had, now there's been some good ones here recently. Dak Prescott's been great, but he's been a fourth rounder. You know, if you look at Jared Goff, jury's still out. Carson Wentz, jury's still out. You know, there, you look at all the guys that came out, I mean, Paxton Lynch can't even get on the field in Denver. So. I would look at that and say that's a small price to pay if you feel like he is the guy. Wow. If, if you're a team and you don't feel like he's worth a four, first and fourth round pick, then there's a pretty good chance you're not a very good team anyway. I wrote down just a few teams that could probably use Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, Jets, Browns, Texans, Jags, Broncos, Chargers, Vikings, Bears, Cardinals, 49ers. Right. A lot of teams. Uh, that's a lot of teams. And so the last time I checked, in January, the four of us are going to be watching the playoffs from our couch or from here, and then we're going to be talking about it. Uh, all of these teams, with the exception of the Houston Texans, are going to be doing the same thing, and they're out of it, basically, because they have Brock Osweiler. You have to start and end with, how do we become a playoff team? If you don't have a quarterback, am I right? If you don't have a quarterback, you've got no shot. Not a little shot, no shot. So why would you go into a situation saying, no, he's not worth it, if you already have no shot at making it to the playoffs? He absolutely is. Will is about no. to jump out of his right. seat right no, now. No, I, I don't like disagreeing with Schlereth because he looks at you in this way. Like, <laughs> like you although I know you're a civilized man that there could be physical violence at right. the end of our disagreement. <laughs> but that being said, I'll risk it. Uh, okay. You're wrong. Okay. Here's why. Um, just because the market says that's what something bears doesn't mean the market's right. The market is a lot like democracy. Democracy isn't necessarily the perfect form of government. It's just the best we have. There's no other good alternatives. The market's the same way. The market's the best we got. There's no all-seeing, all-knowing guy out there that can tell us at any given time what everything is worth. So we defer to the market. That doesn't mean the market's right. And if you want me to bring that home for you, no. Just ask the Houston Texans. Right, no. The I, market bear, 36 million guaranteed to Brock Osweiler. Right. Was the market right? No, absolutely. The market not. was not right. So it yeah. can be wrong. Is it wrong if the market requires a first and a fourth for Jimmy Garoppolo? Here's my three reasons the market would be wrong. Number one, sample size. It's too small. Four games, too little. I don't have enough to give up those two picks for that guy. I don't know if Jimmy Garoppolo is a franchise quarterback. I'm not saying he isn't, but I'm definitely not saying he is based upon four games. Number two. Matt Castle, Brian Hoyer, Ryan Mallett. There's a history of the market suggesting Tom Brady's backup is worth more than he actually is. And third, if you're ever playing cards with somebody or negotiating a deal with another guy, you know this guy 
always wins for some reason. I've become very hesitant for any deal he offers me. That's Bill Belichick. If Bill Belichick says he'll take a one and a four for Jimmy Garoppolo, all of a sudden I start going, huh, that right. might not be such a good deal. If it's worth that, why would he be willing to give him up? Right. Why would he give up Garoppolo no. if that's what it's worth? All legitimate points. All great points. There's no question about it. The problem that you have right now, though, is we're not developing quarterbacks in the college level, right? There is a dearth of quarterbacks in the league in general. And just because the Houston Texans overpaid for Brock Osweiler, does, I mean, the Broncos were going to overpay for him. They, right. they offered him $16 million a year. The market you said know, it's what he's worth. Right. And the, and the market is often wrong. You know who else the market was wrong about? Dak Prescott went to the fourth round before he got an opportunity to play, you know, or get drafted. Tom Brady, sixth rounder. They're wrong all the time. That I feel the majority like of the time, they're wrong. But the bottom line is, if you're Chicago, you're like, we've gone through the Jay Cutler experiment for how many years now? We know that's not the right answer, and people are going to invest. It doesn't make it right. It just makes it the way teams no, no. operate. If we're debating whether or not the Pats can get a one and a four Garoppolo, right. you're probably going to win that debate. But whether or not they should, whether or not if I'm the Browns right. or the Bears, should I be giving up that for Garoppolo? My argument to you is no, you should not. The risk well, is too large. Well, you've done the risk of okay, setting if, yourself back. If, if, you're the another, Brown, if you're the Browns with your draft history, you're probably there better you off giving a one and a four based upon the fact that every time you draft somebody, the guy you can't fail at that play. anyway. Right. <laughs> so at least you've got somewhat of a sample size that says at least he played for you know played for Belichick. And I agree with you. All the backup quarterbacks and and you know all the even the the coaches that have left Bill Belichick's tree that have struggled to some degree. So yeah, all those things are are fair points. I'm just saying that Jimmy Garoppolo in a quarterback deprived league, one and a four is a, in my mind, is a small price to pay if you think that that guy is your guy. Sting, don't listen to Will K. <laughs> okay. Are you serious right now? You're a Super Bowl champion. And he just uh, sat here and he said you are wrong. If you're starting at zero, <laughs> and that's essentially what I'm saying that these teams are starting at, and you're not giving yourself a chance, we've seen him. And there's sometimes that you can look at guys, and, you, and, and name, name, a, name a great quote. When, when Peyton Manning came out his first year, that guy's going to be great. Sometimes, Will, you can, former athletes can, look. <clears throat> I'm sorry, you swam. You can look at certain guys. Uh-oh. 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 No, no, he Not bragged now. about no. it. The These other are day. called ad hominem no, attacks. They're yeah. the last <laughs> failing, dying moans of a weak <laughs> argument. There are some times where you can look at a guy and say, this dude can really play. When I watched Jimmy Garoppolo play at the beginning right. of the season, how many people said, could we possibly Get rid of Tom Brady for Jimmy Garoppolo. He just looks the part. Your quarterback, Dak Prescott, the one you say is going to be a future Hall of Famer, it, he looks the part. Right. He, they, they, they do. They have that about them. Yeah. You, you never know. You never here's, know. The, here's the other thing. You know, one of the beauties of the National Football League is it's not just about drafting guys and it's not just about your quote-unquote system. It's about development of players. And New England probably does it better than any other team in the National Football League. They develop their players. Their system is, we're going to put you in a position to win based on your skill set, not based on our system. And unfortunately, there's a lot of coaching staffs in the National Football League that just think they can plug and play a guy into a system that doesn't necessarily fit that particular system. Right. And they just continue to drive the point. Right. And, and for that, you're 100% right. If he goes into a situation where they don't, they don't maximize his strengths. Chip Kelly, we're just going to put you in this system. My system works. That, that's not how the NFL really works, especially in this day and age where development, lack of practice, you've got to be able to develop players. Last point, well. Yeah, a couple quick points. First of all, um, I didn't know that Super Bowl rings came with sheets of right and wrong for all future arguments. I didn't know that that meant you can never be wrong. I know he's played with a lot of good quarterbacks. Number two, <laughs> what I know. blind agreement is not a sign of respect. Just because I disagree doesn't mean I disrespect well, him. Well said, fact, Will. It's a sign of respect to look at a man in the eye and tell him, I'm sorry. I think right. you're wrong despite that ring. I didn't say that. And I third, just said he should not listen to you. And third, his point about <laughs> Dak Prescott in the end is the one that makes my point. There are other ways to find quarterbacks. You don't have to pay what the market requires if you can evaluate talent. Your best point, I think, is the one about the Browns. If you can't evaluate talent, you might well, as well, well roll the dice. Right. Right. Nothing that, to lose. Dak Prescott wouldn't have gotten anything before we saw him play. We've seen Jimmy Garoppolo play. We've also heard how good he's looked for the first couple of years in the league. He's experienced, he's learned from Tom Brady, and he's also showed me he can play at a very, very high level. 
I'll give that for a quarterback in this league right now. Uh, speaking of those who may be staying or leaving, he might make you leave after what you He's just not. Said. That's the mistake everyone's <laughs> making. Oh. 